Hello everybody and welcome to the solution to this week's tutorial. If you recall, our problem is to take an indented list like this that's in plain text using stars to show items and indentation to show parent-child relationships and turn it into a proper HTML list with UL tags and LI tags. And notice that if we have a sublist like this one, the opening tag for the parent item is there and the closing tag for the parent item comes after the close of the sublist. And that's going to turn out to be really important. So, here we are. We're going to use white for the editor and yellow for the shell. And I'm creating a file called indent.py. And I'm going to show you a simple solution that doesn't actually work in order to motivate a more complex solution that does. So let's start off by creating a simple input file something like uh, first.txt is star a, star b, 1, 2, c. Let's see if we can, oh, let's put another one under here. There. Let's see if we can convert that. Well, I'm going to import the system library. I'll just read from standard input for now. We're going to throw all of this code away in a moment. For line in sys.standard input, if line starts with star and space, then do something, because that's a major item. Else, if the line starts with space space star space, it's a child item, so we'll do something else. Else, assert false, unrecognized line, print out an error message. Now, let's see whether that alone works. It shouldn't produce any output, but it shouldn't trip that assertion. So Python indent.py, read input from first.txt. Okay, it ran without crashing, so at least these lines are sorting through all of the possible input. Let's see what we should do here. I can say uh, text equals line dot, let's strip off from the left hand side the star space, and let's strip off everything that's white space from the right hand side. So L strip and R strip strip things from the left hand side and right hand side of a string respectively. If you don't give them any arguments, they just strip spaces. If you do give them an argument, they remove that text if it's there. So L strip star space is taking off a leading asterisk in space. Print list item plus the text plus a closing list item. All right, I just added one thing. Good, A, B, and C. Right, we're not handling the children yet. Let's see if we can take care of them. Let's strip off space, space, star, space, and let's add a bit of indentation here so that we're printing space, space, li, rerun this. All right, that's all of our list items. But this is a flat list. Right now, a, b, 1, 2, c, 3 are all at the same level in the list. The indentation there is meaningless to HTML. I also don't have the opening and closing ul items. So let's add that. Print an opening list item. Print a closing list tag. OK, I'm now opening the list and closing the list. But if I put this into first.html and open first.html, let's enlarge that so you can see it, what I've got is a flat list. There's no indentation there. I need to add the parent-child relationships, the listing and sublistings. I need basically to put in that and that where they're required and instead of having the closing list item right there at the end of the line I need to put it down there after the closing list. Well this turns out to be trickier than you would think because I need to handle the case of there not being any children. A doesn't have any children. I need to close two lists at once if a sub item is the last child of a main item and so forth. So just handling one line at a time turns out to make this really hard. What I want to do is come back and do something a little more clever. I'm going to say lines equals sys.stdin.readlines. So now I've got a list of all the lines of text from my input. And I'm going to do something like um, do outer on lines. So I'm going to say do outer of lines is print the opening of the list, print the closing of the list, 
and then I'm tempted to say four line in lines, but that's not actually the right way to solve this problem. Instead, I'm going to say current equals zero. That's the index of the line I'm currently looking at. While current is less than length of lines, i.e. while there's more data to put out, assert that lines of current starts with star space. This is a top level item. And then say that text is lines current dot r strip star space dot l strip to get rid of trailing white space print list item plus text but not the close I'm going to print that in a moment in between though I'm going to say that current is incremented to point at the next line and then current is do an inner list of lines and current. I'm going to ask another function to handle this nested list and give me back the index of the next line in the input to be handled. This is a very common pattern in parsing. I need to look ahead one item. So I'm going to say in my main function, let's just keep going until there's no more input. I'm going to handle exactly one type of item here. I'm going to handle the top level items. I'm going to call another function to handle the innermost items. It's going to tell me where to resume my input. I tell it by passing in current where we are now. I give it the list of lines so it can grab the input data and it tells me where to resume. Why do I increment here? Well, I've handled this line. I've handled the line at index current. So I need to tell the inner function to handle the next one. And I can simplify this code by saying do inner of lines and current plus one. I'm at line current. I say, all right, do inner. I want you to start handling input from line current plus one and give me back the index of the line where I should go. And if you run out of stuff, current will be greater than or equal to len lines, so I'll drop out of the loop. So let's write def do inner of lines and current and say while current is less than length of lines so that we don't have an index go out of bounds and uh, lines of current starts with space space star space Sorry about the line wrap there. In here, I want to say current plus equals one. And then I'm going to return current. It's not printing anything out at the moment. Let's go back up here and break this line so that I don't get that ugly wrap. How's that? Well, current is less than the length of lines, i.e. current is a valid index. And this is an indented line. It starts with space, space, star, space then let's just move on to the next index. So this is just going to skip over all of these inner items and just keep incrementing the index until it either gets to the end of input or to the next outermost item. Let's see what happens when we run this. All right, it gives me UL, LI with A, LIB, LIC. Good, it's skipping over things. It's not printing any of the inner items. So switch back. What do I do here? I say text is lines of current dot L strip space space star space dot R strip and then print space space list item plus text plus I can close the list item right away. I don't need to worry about deferring that because there aren't triply nested lists. Let's try running that. All right, list item, oh, there's a star A, there's a star B. Hmm, what am I doing wrong? Text is lines current dot R strip dot L strip. Oh, that wants to be left strip that and right strip that. I'm stripping the star space off the left hand side and stripping the trailing white space off the right hand side. I just had my directions backwards. 
So let's clear this, try running again. Good. Open a list. There's a list item. There's a list item with some children, and I've got the closing tag there. There's a list item with a child, and I've got the closing tag there. Great. Now I need to figure out how to insert the opening UL for the sublist and the closing UL when we're done the sublist. But I only want to introduce those when there's actually a sublist. I don't print them every time because that will make the formatting look bad. Every single major item will look like it's got children even when it doesn't. So how can I do this? Well, what I want to do is notice when I'm printing, about to print a nested item and then print something before it. So I'm going to say have started equals false. If I'm inside this loop, I've got a list item to print. So I say have started equals true because I'm printing space space ul. This is called a one-way flag or a toggle. It starts off false. If I get into the loop at all, then I've got at least one item in the sublist. So I print out the opening of the sublist and then I say yes, I've actually started. And here I need to guard this by saying if not have started, then print that. So if I haven't already started the sublist, then start the sublist and set the flag to true so that I never come around again. Now I find if not have started to be a little bit confusing. I don't like negations. So I'm going to say need to start is true. Change this to be if need to start and then change this to be need to start is false. I find that easier to read because there isn't a negation. Do I need to start the sublist? Well, yes, initially that's true. In here, if I'm inside the list, I must have a sub item, so I must need to start the sublist. I'm not going to try to close the list yet. Let's see whether this works. All right, A doesn't have any children, so it's just list item A, close list item. And again, the fact that there's a line break there doesn't matter to HTML. It's going to ignore that it's only going to pay attention to the tags, and the tags say start a list item, end a list item. What about the next one that has a couple of children? Well, we start a list item. Oh, good. We're starting the sublist. We've got the two sublist items. We haven't closed the sublist yet, but then we've got the close tag to match the open tag around B. I need to close the sublist, but I've got the open where I need it, there and there, and I did not get an opening UL tag here where there aren't any children. So let's switch back. How can I tell if I need to close a sublist? Well, did I have any children at all? If I got into this loop at all, then I'm going to be printing the opening of the sublist. I better make a note to myself that I need to close it. Well, I've got that. If need to start is false, then I must have got in here. So at the end, I can say, if not, need to start print the closing tag because if need to start is still true after the loop then I never executed the loop so there weren't any children so I don't need to close the list this works I find it confusing I'm going to say need to close is false if need to close then print the closing tag and then in here I'm going to say that need to close is true. If I got into the loop at all, then I need to close the sublist because I've printed an item right there. I don't, strictly speaking, need the two flags. I can do this with just one flag. I find it a lot easier if each flag corresponds to one test. Using need to start for two separate purposes. In particular, using a flag called need to start to keep track of whether I need to close the list is just going to lead to headaches further down. So let's see whether this code does what I want. All right. A doesn't have any children. That works. B does have some children. Okay, that works. And C has one child, and that works. So I believe this code is working. What I really want to emphasize, though, 
is this code is very complex and fragile. If we wanted to handle another layer of list, we could sort of probably maybe duplicate the do inner function. If we wanted to be able to handle tables and paragraphs and emphasize text and other nested tags, this is the wrong approach again. There's a more complicated but more structured approach that will handle nested data, nested formats, indentation, and so forth. It's not trivial. It takes a bit of computer science theory to understand what's going on. So the real moral of the story is don't write data formats. There are lots of well-designed, well-defined data formats out there. If you're working with grids, you use HDF or NetCDF. If you're working with nested data, you use XML and an XML parser. If you are working with other data, you might use something called JSON. You might use comma-separated values. You might use relational database tables. But if you're writing a parser for a data format that you designed yourself, then you've already made your biggest mistake.